Conversations with Daily Prana. Today, we delve into the serene world of Reiki healing. And with us is Master G and a distinguished panel of Reiki healers and a newly certified Reiki master. Now, with the introductions, let's start with you, Dr. Leia. Hello, good afternoon. Namaste, everyone. I'm Dr. Leia Padesha. Uh, I'm a dentist and um, a practicing Reiki healer. Uh, I've done Reiki 1 and 2 last two years ago and recently I've been certified as a master healer. Namaste everyone, my name is Sao Ji and I'm a virtual assistant and I'm also a master healer. Namaste, my name is Jao Freitag. I am a software engineer by day and I also am a Reiki master. Step one, I'm Dr. Tracy De Guzman. I'm a practicing neurologist and I'm also a Master Healer since 2019. Thank you. Everyone knows Master G already, so we will start this show off. Master G, can you start us off by explaining the fundamental principles of Reiki? Like, what is Reiki? I'm going to start. Okay. Well, basically, I, I need to define what is Reiki first, and then we'll, I'll push you through what are the principles that governs the Reiki practice. Well, Reiki is defined as a life force energy. So basically, it's known as the unseen energy that is present in everything. So it's present within you, within the things that surround us, and to everyone. So in science, it is also defined as energy. Everything that has life has energy. So when we speak about energy, it is not only spiritual, but as well as science as well. Right? So in terms of principles, it is governed by five guiding principles of Reiki. First is, just for today, so this is always a Reiki healer, a Reiki believer, a Reiki practitioner, always remember the principles. Just for today, I will not worry, I will be happy, I will be grateful, I will do my work honestly, and I will love and respect all living things. So these are the five guiding and binding principles of the Reiki practice. Thank you, Master G, but why do you say just for today? I am so curious, why just today? Because in Reiki, we have to give importance to the present moment. We have to live in today so that we enjoy the moment. We give a gratitude, we give thanks, we give joy to each and every experience that we have. Because by doing so, we appreciate what life is. And when we appreciate something, it gives us joy. It gives us positive vibes. It gives us nourishment of the soul. And when you are happy, then everything comes good. You attract only the goodness. So just for today, and then tomorrow is another day. So tomorrow, we will say again, we will start off again. just for today. So to yes. our Reiki healers, knowing these five principles, how do these principles apply to your teachings as a Reiki healer? I guess let's start off with the male, Mr. Ralph Talk. Well, for me, the most important one is being grateful. I have a very stressful work that I do, which um, disturbs my peace. And paying attention to being grateful for the blessings in my life really helps get rid of all that negativity and lifts my spirits again. Dr. Gypsy? For me, so every day um, before I start my Reiki connection, I always um, put these principles in my mind and sometimes I recite it out loud so to remind myself that I should be in the present moment and it will start my day. Um, as a, for there are definitely skeptic viewers here. So when you say, I recite this, and you know, I think about it. So when you recite it, do you actually somehow, like the energy is there, like you can feel it, like it influences you? 
Yes, I think so because um, it's it's more of it's not just about the energy, but it's more of mindset. Oh, it's being also mindful that you when you recite these things, it's like preparing your yourself for the day um, that you will be grateful, happy, and all these things. Thank you, Tom. Miss LG. Yeah, just like what the Dr. Trixie said, uh, these are like affirmations so that you get to set your mind to be in a good mood. And uh, as what Ralph mentioned, I also practice gratitude a lot. I have I keep a gratitude journal since last year, and I make sure to uh, write gratitude every day when I start my day, just so um, it actually attracts more into your life. Doctor, you're being a dentist. Yeah. And a mother too. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a very busy person. So um, these principles really is very helpful to me, especially if uh, I recite it as um, uh, as I start my day. It really sustains me to make that calm decision along the way with all those stressors. Okay. So it really helps me. Okay. So Master G, when you Google or you just watch YouTube, there are different styles and approach to Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, are they aware of all these styles or do they only follow the ones that you teach? Well, there is only one traditional and correct method of doing Reiki. But then there are people or there are a lot of teachers who modify this to suit probably the needs of the client. But the basic principle should be the guiding principles. Now, if you are practicing this already and you find something, a practice that you feel more deeply connected, why not? For as long as the intention of the soul is to create goodness within you and for others as well. To the Reiki healer, do you have your different approach though? Have you come up with your own style of Reiki? Doc? Ralph, LG, the I mostly follow the process that was set forward by Master Jean, but every time it changes just a little bit based on what I feel from mm -hmm. the client. Okay, so Master G, I will now have like, I really have no idea about this. No, I'm not feeling well. I have a super bad headache. Mm -hmm. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Master G, I fear that Reiki heals. <laughs> so can you heal me? What is your first approach to that? Well, we have to see what is the cause why you are not feeling well. Because most of the time, we, they always see it as if you have a fever, for example, they always just address the fever directly. But we have to see what's the cause of that. Because in the realm of energy, there are different causes. That could just be a manifestation of an imbalanced chakra. Which chakra? We have to check. Okay. So that's how it starts and it's definitely going through a process. Because you see, Dia, when we speak about Reiki, we are not touching the physical body of the person. We are using the energy that surrounds the person. So we are talking about the presence of a chakra or the spinning wheel of the body, which act as a filter of your body. Going deeper, when these filters of the body which are present around us, when these are not functioning properly, then it stops and then it refuses to receive incoming good energy and retains only whatever is the bad energy that is already inside you if you don't cleanse it up then you will continue to feel imbalance and it can manifest either into physical sickness into emotional uh sickness or maybe psychological imbalance so are there requirements though like i really do not know anything about reiki but i want to be healed and i am very open to be healed so if i come to you let's say miss lg if i come to you i want to do me are there requirements do i need to do anything i think there are no requirements when it comes to reiki healing the important thing is just that you surrender and that you believe that energy can really heal you okay now ralph how important is your connection being the reiki healer to, when you do healing how important is it my connection to the person? Yeah, you co your connection to the Reiki practice as well as to your client. Well, I find that whenever I work on someone, the connection is usually pretty much instantaneous. Um, and then it kind of goes away when I return to my normal life. So when you first started out, this can be answered by anyone. When you first started out, did the self-confidence like, oh, I'm actually healing someone. Did you instantly feel it or 
or you discourage? Can anyone answer that? Like you know that it's working. Oh, I'm actually healing this person. The uh, I haven't really done healing on clients per se. I usually do healing on myself. I have done a little healing on some of Master G's clients previously. Uh, and well, the connection is once the connection is there, and then you can really feel what's wrong with the person. It's it's easier for you to heal um, the person. It's it's you have to have you have to also rely on your intuition um, because that also creates the deeper connection to the energy and to the person as well. And that has been what has been guiding me. Thank you, Dom. Um, Miss LG. Yeah, just uh, to add to what Dom Trixie said, it, it did took a lot of practice because at first it would give you, you really doubt, doubt, doubt your capability to yes. heal. But I, I think what helped most of us is that when we practice, the feedback from the clients that they did feel, feel something, it boosts our confidence to do the practice. And I think the maintenance uh, is very, very important. Meditation helps a lot with intuition. So I think breaking and meditation um, works hand in hand. Okay. Because you know, um, before I was a uh, Reiki master healer, I don't know about that energy, about that oil energy. But because uh, the moment you are attuned, you know, you can really feel the energy in your hand. So when we diagnose a patient, we can feel if the chakra is depleted or not. So. After you heal that patient or you balance or you cleanse it, you can also feel it if it's already cleansed or it's already balanced. And of course, with practice and the, the feedback of the patient. Okay, being in the medical field, doc, a dentist, doc, Trixie, um, paano nyo na consider a great key? Because of course, everyone it is not really open to it. I'm sure there are challenges along the way. I know ang in yung being uh, consistent in saying yung uh, I believe in it. I believe in it. It is working. Um. So my journey started <laughs> in 2019 when actually I felt something was lacking in my life. So um, I was already into yoga. I think I was eating right. I was eating healthy, but I just felt that something else is lacking so i was just uh searching for answers for me and so that's when my my journey started so i stumbled across prana which was apparently close at that time but for some reason <laughs> master g was available and it's just somehow the universe just collided yeah, for us to yeah. meet and um, um discuss what was um what 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 uh, what i needed and that's when i learned about um, Reiki, chakra, and all these things that were actually um, I never heard of before. I've I've tried meditation, yoga, and etc. I've been incorporating that in my life even before I, I came to Prana. But um, in Prana, it is where I learned about Reiki, and um, it just opened my uh, world into another dimension somehow, and it has guided me into my spiritual. Um, but um, I think for, for, for people, because not everyone is, um, of course, there are a lot of doubts um, too, about Reiki, what it is, etc. It's just, I think, making yourself open or keeping your heart open. I think even starting with just mindfulness and being um, in the present moment as much as you can, can really open up this other world. Maybe it's not Reiki right away, but it's more of um, a journey towards you know, where life will be. That's fascinating. Thank you. Now, being the only consistent male <laughs> in daily prana, how do Reiki and being in the world of web development collide? Like, why are you here as a Reiki master now and Reiki master healer? Um. <clears throat> Well, we can use Reiki on corporations, and there's a lot of negative energy in the corporate world, 
and I actively try to push positive energy into the workplace, and hopefully enough of them will receive it and that things will improve. Okay, thank you for that. Now, this is just the first batch of our Reiki healers. We will have a second batch after this. Hello, I'm Dr. Jun Ismania. I'm a practicing physician in Bacolod City. Um, I joined Prana for three to four years now. Prana has really changed my life, my financial life. I was depressed before and I was obese and Prana has changed me uh, 180 degrees right now. And uh, I've learned a lot of things, meditation, uh, manifestation classes. And because I was a doctor, I was uh, curious on the healing practice in prana, which is really, I realized that it's easier to diagnose patients, especially with the energy. I could correlate laboratories and uh, diagnostic modalities with the healing energy. It's, uh, I'm quite amazed that uh, I could uh, easily see uh, these diseases and of course I can heal with energy, not only with medicines. I hope that the healing conversation could reach a lot of lives here in Bacolod and elsewhere. And uh, believe me, it has changed my life. I truly believe that it will change yours. We're back here in Healing Conversations with Prana and we have a fresh batch of Reiki healers. Reiki Master Healers. Now let's start off with a brief introduction of each of you. Let's start with Miss Sam. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sam and I'm a virtual assistant and a Reiki master healer. Namaste, I'm Mitch, housewife and a Reiki master healer. Namaste, I'm Marie in Austria. I'm a visual artist, creator, and art writer and um, I'm a master healer. Namaste. of Reiki Master Healers here good with foods. different backgrounds. Yeah, good foods. Yes. Now, let me ask, paano ninyo na-discover ang Daily Prana? First, um, let's not talk about Reiki first, just coming here in Daily Prana. I know ang history, paano. Let's start off with Jessie. Wow. Never heard of Prana, honestly, Master. <laughs> Ever since. Never heard of Prana. It's just that I have this guardian angel here on Earth who just introduced me na chakra balancing without me knowing what's chakra balancing ha? and energy healing okay out of curiosity there's something in, something brought me here na ma okay ko and then when i experienced it for the first time it opened doors so many doors for my spiritual journey and my healing i started with meditation and then manifestation uh, reiki and then and my journey here in Prana. So, ever since we there, when I have idea about Prana, it's just that how the universe introduced me on the perfect timing. It was pandemic. Start oh, okay. Up. It was January. When so, when we, everyone was hiding, yeah. you're <laughs> looking for something. Yes, oh, okay. exactly. Healing it. That was my uh, year of healing and awareness. <laughs> Miss Maureen? Yeah. You know, Jess, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with um, I can relate. I can relate to what she has been through. Um, because for me, accident, but I'm okay. I'm And you know, I believe in that saying that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So this, oh yes, this is like a recent journey for me. Although you know that, um, and. Um, artist with an angst. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Don't get hit someone though. I didn't know. I was just really full of negative energy, so full of you know, that that very thirsty soul seeking for something that you don't even know what. And then suddenly I just came to Prana. Um, my, my sister um, had her teachers. Um, they had a meditation class. So she said, Sis, why don't you go to Prana and try? 
So, ako man, ang man, wala man ko, mahala ko ba alo na ko din. Nag ano ko, ang first ko was, um, kakao. Ito ko my arm chakra. Then from that, I began the journey and then I did the 21 days. But for me, it's like more 28. 28 days journey for me. Um, and then I suddenly felt so at peace. And I finally came to know my soul, my purpose, how this has helped me so profound. So I'm grandma, Reiki. So I went through the steps, meditation, yoga, and then it just helped me spiritually. And now I have this no anta boga ball piece of mine. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let's proceed to this match. Um so for the experience, I started 2019 and I studied psychology on that and then uh, after a year uh, uh, I also studied um, spirituality so last year um, last year I already know about uh, spirituality um Reiki healing but it's well that for personal and some some uh, uh, last year na uh, inquired about yoga and then I saw prana and then when I saw that they are they're offering Reiki healing and I just I just prioritize it more and um it's it's really um Transformative. Thank you. For me, uh, it was just a random thought for me that I wanted to try yoga. So I really had no idea about any meditation or what Reiki is or whatever. I just wanted to exercise because I felt so unfit and then I was feeling down, um, probably also due to the pandemic and everything. So, uh, it was just a random thought, and then within the day, I was just trying to search for something, and then I came up Prana, and then I said, uh, maybe try for me, and then at the end of the day, I was like, what was my enrolled in Ugolpe, and everything, so I'm like, okay, so I guess I'm going with this, and then, um, it just uh, it just became so natural, so yeah, I just continued from there, so I started with yoga, and then now, um, meditation, and then Reiki, and then I'm here, so so uh, I think it's more like the universe um, for Prana found me instead of me finding Pranas. Master G, um, I think two of them here were like master healers so soon. So can you tell us about it? Like why are they Reiki master healers in just such a short span of time as compared to your other Reiki healers? Okay. Well, the journey of uh, Reiki in terms of the progress from a Reiki ordinary one and two practitioner to become a Reiki master entirely depends on the readiness of the person. Normally, I would require a person to be a Reiki one and two practitioner to be there only if the person prefers to just do self-healing and for the family cleansing and everything. However, if the person finds it necessary to help herself, like if you have headache, if you have severe sickness, if you want to learn more about how to help heal or be a channel of healing, then I would recommend them to proceed to Reiki or level 3 or where you can touch other people's life. Now, there is a gap of at least a month or two before you can proceed as a master healer. Those gaps will depend on how you nurture yourself and how you are very eager to proceed. Because I will be able, well, it's probably a gift, I will be able to intuitively assess if the soul is ready to become a Reiki master. If not, then I would I would be the one to tell the person, not yet. It's not yet time. Just like how they want to try other spiritual experiences, and I would tell them, no, not at this time, because the soul is not ready yet. But if I see that it's fit, then go ahead. Like these people, uh, I think Mitch and Maureen, they are, they are really fast. Why? They souls have been very hungry for a long time. And then they really need a lot of healing, right? They are here, so they can testify to that and how they are happy that they are very okay right now and very, very on the 360 degree. I don't want those past to haunt them again. So I want them to maintain that without me in their life. So if in case 
then they can do their own healing for themselves and for others even in my absence. So I want them to be very independent and to be very self-reliant in terms of their personal journey. Thank you, Matthew. Madamo, nasa doon sa kong curious din. Like, even ang non-runner people, curious sila sa sa effects sa Reiki. So, sa inyo nga practice, may ara na ka mo clients nga common ang kailangan i-report sa inyo nga outcome. Like, ang um, may, like, ang um, mulig na ang common denominator for me nga ilangan na feel sa practice, sa inyo Reiki sa inyo. Like the energy that they yes. have? Yes, usually they feel so light, so relieved. Feeling nila doon nagpapasahe sila yes. without the touch oh. again na ano, and they feel relaxed. Because I've been very fast to other journey kung as a Reiki master. Because I have been like um guided to a lot of people who need um help. Their souls, you know, were also like um searching for that. And then um so gina putang sa tubang way. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, so I'm here I and then I can maybe intuitive man ko that I can see through people, I can see their souls, I can feel the the amuna and then a common is we are lots of us, we are lost souls and it's a but we don't even know it because we feel okay. We consciously we feel okay, we mask all our feelings, we seem to be okay, but you know our souls that are the big we must be lost. So that's where Reiki comes in. I think that in it should be visible. So a lot of people do not understand. Yes, that's actually the the word there. It should be visible. So you know, naman our audience, kung hindi mo makita, it's not there, de ba? So Sam, let's talk about you, cause we're classmates in Reiki one and two. <laughs> and so far, any one challenges mo sa practice? Um, well, for the challenges in my practice, um, uh, my personally, um, sometimes there are doubts. Uh, you can't help it. Na sometimes you'll doubt yourself. Is this really working, or um, what am I doing? Uh, is it? Is this correct? Or, so, um, just keep practicing, and then um, I think just. Uh, Maintain your uh, meditation and make you practice connecting with Reiki. And if you're in self doubt, um, just accept it and then let it be and then let it go. So don't fight um, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, just surrender. So, how do you guys deal with relatives that are skeptic? I would really like to know because <laughs> most of my relatives are skeptic. <laughs> Anyone deal can. with them? That would be one way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. How do you deal with them? How do you yeah. handle them? Have you experienced though? Actually, honestly, um, there is none. 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 So all of them are open to Reiki. They're like not really open, but not really skeptical at the same time. But they're not against it or they're not even like questioning about it because when I do um, healing or make healing with my family for some reason we thought us with that and they let me allow it without what to come back guys it came really naturally siguro siguro with the intention na siguro na they will allow me or they will just let me do with all the questions siguro but for siguro at time now there are people when get siguro not relatives but more of Let's say very traditional um, mga friends and titos and titas. That's very um, very religious. Yeah, more religious. Yes. Yeah. 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 So how do you deal with it? You would just say that. Politely though. Politely though. You would respect na may na ano na. This practice is not not me ba. We're just um, we're channels. just channels. Yes. Yeah, yeah, instruments of life. But to to share this um, healing with other people. And this is from. Our divine father as well. So it's just um, I think more of not really, you know, um, putting up a fight against them or arguing with them. It's just like how message you would tell us 
to just bless them. Bless them that they will understand, bless them that they will accept, and bless them that they will not really go through it na mag-question it or mag-argue sa iyo. I, I think when there's a point na gusto mo, ka, you feel like the person is too close-minded, wala na ko ka-open ka some parts. I just keep quiet, I smile, and just pray na. But, Oh, thank you. Maureen, I think you have something to share with that question. Well, you know, I came from a conservative ethnic family. And so some some of them learning about me and my sister um, having undergone Reiki Master Healing or Reiki Healing um, have asked, Hindi na iya ka ni Mungo? Hindi na iya ka? Something like that. Because it's off. But then we know that this has nothing to do with religion, right? Correct. That's true. Because somehow you need to you need to understand that if people say uh, something really bad and hurting about the practice, uh, I think you should not throw back that negative energy to them. Why? Because you know very well that you have experienced it firsthand. That there is nothing wrong in the practice, and in fact, we seek for divine light and guidance whenever we do touch ourselves and other people, right? So our maintenance fields are basically prayers, meditation, and then deciding ourselves. So what's wrong with that? And uh, I think to reinforce them, Bia, I think we, people should also understand that this is not about spirituality mm -hmm. only. This is also backed by science, right? Energy is everything that is in motion. Everything that is uh, having life or ev even non-living things has energy because it has its gravity. So everything on earth has energy and that's what we are touching. My God, but then they think of Tesla, right? Yes. If you want to understand the universe, think in terms of frequencies and energy. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Now, as we come to a close to all our Reiki healers, what's the final message you would like to share with our viewers about Reiki? Let's start with you, Miss Sam. Um, I think uh, what's important or the most important is just to keep an open-minded, open heart, and uh, that's it, I guess. Miss Mitch? Para sa akin, testingan niyo kit. Hey, kung hindi niyo pag-testingan, hindi niyo kit ma-fail. Nga, true kit siya ganit. It's true. Something invisible. Yeah, Mia, for everyone out there whose souls is like, Whose souls are hungry for something that you do not know what. You might want to try and read. You might find what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for me, um, still to the no idea. I think whoever resonates with this, I pray and I hope that this will connect through your heart. Because Reiki, Reiki has changed so much in life. Not just for a personal healing, but everywhere, everything, and everywhere I go, I use Reiki. So, since energy is everywhere, Reiki can be everywhere. So, I hope that more hearts will be open, you will be open. Because experiencing this is like a lifetime investment. This is forever. So, thank you, Master G. Mm. Well, um, I would say, do not wait for the last moment to go into Reiki when you feel that you need some healing. Unfortunately, sometimes, well, fortunately, maybe, because they find the answer here, but they always go to Reiki as the last resort. When nothing works, they come to Reiki. We don't mind if we are the last resort, just come. If you want healing, we are always here to help you transform your lives. So if this resonates, just like Giselle said, if this resonates with you, if you are someone who is always in lack, always chasing abundance, always surrounded by negative people, always sad and depressed for no reason at all, or always sick and you don't understand why, then you must address the energy that is within you and that surrounds you. So come and join us here for Reiki. Thank you. Now, thank you so much, Master G, and to our distinguished panel of Reiki healers. <laughs> And to our viewers, we hope that this episode enlightens and inspires you to explore the healing power of Reiki. 
stay well and be inspired to explore the energy around you.